What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, today we're going to be doing another car review. As you guys can see, we have a Toyota GR Yaris behind me. So this car belongs to my friend, all right, who also owns the Evo and the FD2 that I reviewed last time. I don't know if you guys can remember, but the Evo is over there. All right, see now, the blue Evo. Remember now, the 500 horsepower Evo. So apparently he still has it, but he has picked up his brand new Toyota GR Yaris and we are going to take you guys on a walk around and also for a test drive. Alright guys, as usual, we're going to start off with the front, alright? So this car, on the exterior wise, hasn't been done much, alright? On the front, you know, it's running a TRD front lip. Because as you guys already know, la, the GI Yaris la, is quite an aggressive car from the factory. I mean, look at it, it's like a small, angry hatchback. You know? It's so small, so short, but wide and mean at the same time, alright? So the front here is running a TRD uh, front lip, you know, with the side add-on uh, plates, whatever you call that, right? So on the front here, we have a sub-belt toe strap because this, this car actually sees some track duty one. Alright. So on the side, you know, we're going to look at the wheels. So these are one of my favourite wheels, lah, right? So these are the TE37 Black Edition 3 in 19 inch, right? So it's a 19 inch, 9.5 width, 38 offset, alright? So this car is running a set of Hankook Ventus RS4s, you know, 265, 35, 19, all 4. Because this car is a 4 wheel drive, lah. Alright, so very high performance tyres, very good tyre. For the brakes, it's running the stock brakes. So these are um, four ports from the factory already, like the GR calipers. I'm not sure if they're made by Brembo or not, but I can see behind it, there's endless caliper, uh, sorry, endless brake pads. Okay, high performance brake pads and uh, aftermarket slaughtered disc rotors. Lah. Alright, so for suspension, this car is running a set of HKS. If I'm not wrong, they are hyper four, uh, hyper max four suspension. But look at the right height, guys. Look, look at the fitment. Super functional, lah, With four fingers, lah, can muscle. But it's okay, you know, because this owner, um, when he builds his cars, right, is function over form. But it still looks cool. It still looks cool. Don't get me wrong. But of course, for people like us, we want it to be a little bit lower, lah. Huh? The side skirt is a TRD piece as well. So this is where the stock side skirt ends, and this is an add-on piece to the original GR side skirt, lah, right? On the rear, is also running the same wheels, so same setup, no stagger setup. Um, the brakes also stock. I think they are twin pots, though, if I'm not wrong. Lah. I may be wrong, but I think they are twin pots, right? So, okay, I want to show you guys one thing. For those of you guys that are fans of GR Yaris, would know that this car has a carbon fiber roof, all right? But as you guys can see, you know, this is matte carbon fiber, right? But just to let you guys know a little fun fact, ah, what you guys see here is not real carbon fiber. Uh. This is actually a carbon fiber sticker. However, underneath the sticker is real carbon fiber. It's forged carbon. So if you guys want to see that forged carbon, right, you have to remove this fake carbon sticker. So honestly, I don't know why Toyota did that. Lah. I don't know why did they layer over real carbon with fake carbon sticker. I'm not sure. But I know a lot of guys in Malaysia has already removed the carbon sticker and actually spray a layer of clear coat over the forged carbon. It looks super cool, lah, guys. So it's forged carbon from the factory. Very, very cool. All right. So on the rear, nothing much. You know, it's a stock rear end. But we have a side carbon fiber GT wing over here. Lah. So this is an adjustable carbon GT wing which mounts onto the stock rear hatch. So it gives it more of the aggressive look, lah, you know, because like I said, lah, this car is so, so fat, you know, so it, it's cute but angry at the same time. You know, it's like an angry cartoon character. Look at it, the hip, you know, look how wide this car is. Look at, you know, look from here, you can see the camber, you know, how wide the front arches are. All right. So for the exhaust, this is running uh, Ganador. Uh, just a real back box, lah, real muffler, right? So not the full system. So this Ganador is actually the same company that makes the Ganador side mirrors. Lah. So they do side mirrors, but they do exhaust also, right? Not a very popular brand in Malaysia because most people like to go for the bigger brands, the HKS, the Blitz. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool, you know, twin tips from the factory. They come with twin tips as well. All right. Now we're going to go check out the interior. The interior has quite some cool bits. Lah. All right. So first thing you'll notice uh, in the interior, right? Is this beautiful CAE shifter, lah, guys. This is a full shifter replacement. Billet, billet aluminium, super notchy, super tight, you know, and this is not cheap as well. Lah. You know, you don't really see, or at least me, like, I haven't really seen a lot of cars in Malaysia actually run this, you know. In in, in Germany, I know it's very popular, like the neighboring cars. 
they love to use these CAE shifters on their Porsches and BMWs. Alright, for the steering wheel, we have a Momo deep dish wheel. Alright, Momo deep dish steering wheel with a work SRD relocation kit lah, like you guys have seen in my previous videos of the FK8. So not only Honda yang ada tau, Toyota pun dia ada relocation kit sebab original steering wheel, dia memang ada button. So kalau you nak tukar aftermarket steering wheel, you mesti kena relocate lah itu button. Kalau bukan, you buang sayang sebab dia ada your audio button, cruise control ke apa-apa kan. So yeah, this is pretty cool as well. But one of my favorite piece of this interior is this lah, which this one. Sit idaman lah weh. Recaro RSG ASM. Alright, ASM Yokohama, Japan. So this is just super cool lah. You know, Recaros, you know, you got Alcantara with the center. I know what you call this lah, the, the, the microfiber sort of uh, fabric, you know. It's very sporty. Should be very comfortable. Later we'll find out. Right, so other small small bits that the owner has added on is this, like this carbon fiber trim here. Nothing too crazy, alright, because the, these parts all come uh, from factory carbon, if I'm not wrong. The center console trim and the window switch panel trim, you know. So what I heard is he just added this piece on lah. You know, over here you can see this um, WRC plaque here. So what does it say? That developed for FIA World Rally Championship because this car is actually a homologation model, alright. So what that means is in order to... What homologation means is, in order to, you know, race this kind of rally, they have to produce a certain amount of road-going cars lah. Hence, you know, that's why we have this road-going GR Yaris, you know. So, initially, Toyota said that it was going to be a bit limited lah. You know, limited in production run, you know, but because of the overwhelming sales and everything, they was like, okay, you know, we're just going to keep making it, we're just going to keep selling it. Alright, so, this is a very cool car, you know. Something that has never really been done. So it's a 1.6 litre turbocharged three cylinder under the hood that makes about 280 horsepower, right? Give or take. I would say this is one of the most powerful three cylinder turbo engines from the factory. Lah. Because most of them are like eco, no? you know, like eco cars, you know, 1.0 three cylinder, 1.5 three cylinder, and they make all like 130, 140 horsepower. So this car makes almost 300 horsepower from a three cylinder engine, which is almost 100 horsepower per cylinder. That's quite crazy, lah, right? But okay, so that's it for the walk around. You know, we're going to go for a test drive. I heard the owner told me that this car is super fun, more fun than his FK8. So yes, first time driving with GRRs, I'm quite excited. We're going to go for a drive. Yaris, first time driving a GR Yaris. Alright, so right off the bat, the clutch. Okay, so this car is stock, la, like I said, the clutch is stock. Um, yeah, actually, no, that's, that, that's all. La. I mean, the, the engine is stock, la, the clutch is stock, engine is stock. But the shifter is not. So the clutch is actually quite light. I mean, as per most modern day manual cars, la, the GR Yaris, uh, the 86, the FK8, they are all very easy to drive on actually. Like even as a beginner manual driver, right, it's quite easy to drive, but the shifter is so nice. Okay, so we're going to do a first gear pull, like this a bit. So that was like 1.1 bar boost. Not bad though, pulls nice. This is 95% stock, uh, the engine, by the way. No tune, no air filter, nothing. Only a muffler. And that doesn't make much of a difference, but it's not even a full down pipe, so... Oh. The shifter is so nice, lah. this is so... This feels so well built. Like the between gears, it's just so smooth. It's so like notchy, so clicky, but it's so smooth at the same time. Okay, so uh, we are in some uh, town roads, lah. so there's quite a fair bit of bumps here, but the suspension is quite comfortable though, honestly. At the HKS, I mean, they are set at a very functional height, not stupidly low like any of our cars. La. So, you know, it doesn't really compromise much when it comes to the uh, handling. 
car is actually warmed up ready, uh, by the way. Let's go. So I can get a pull. Oh, sounds good also lah. Sounds good. Not very drony. Has a nice throat to it. You can hear the stock recirculating valve. And the seating position is so nice, man, with these Recaros, I tell you. But there's one thing I'll have to complain. I cannot see the heads up display because the seat's a lot lower. So I'm just looking at the numbers. But it's okay. Uneven roads. Oh, very comfortable. Very comfortable. This car's even got the auto ref match seat. Which, that's not me, like, that's the car. Like. <laughs> not very proud of it. But. Yeah, so it says here, like, IMT. So I, I assume it says intelligent manual transmission. Like. So, okay, like I said, it's not this car was 280 horse, right? I was wrong. So it's actually 260 horse with a 350 nm of torque. Like. So apparently it will do 0 to 105.5 seconds, uh, which is fast comparing to, uh, let's compare it to like a Golf GTI, right? Give or take, it's about there as well. 5.8, 5.9. And these are manual, so you got to do all the shifting yourself. And you know, being a three cylinder, right? The vibration is actually very, very minimal. But then again, it's a GR yeah, race, lah. This is not, sorry, yeah. This is not Ativa or Axia, right? Because this is a performance car, lah, right? So for those of you guys that do not know what GR means, GR stands for Gazoo Racing, lah. I know it sounds a little bit stupid. Uh, it's quite funny, lah. But yeah, Gazoo Racing. So it's like a new uh, racing department. So Toyota now, I think, I feel Toyota are doing quite good stuff lah. They got the GR86, the GR Yaris, GR Supra. I wasn't really much of a huge Toyota fan, like the modern ones. Uh, but the new GR Corolla also. Ah, uh, now we got the GR Corolla also. So, Toyota is doing good stuff lah. You know, like most people, while they're going to EVs and, uh, how to say, boring cars, right? Toyota is still coming up with their exciting performance cars, which I feel is cool. Feels very cool. Um, this was one of the first of the GR lineup, lah. The GR Yaris, you know. Uh, maybe we talk a bit about the interior. So the interior is actually, honestly, very bare bones, lah. Like the gauge cluster is nothing crazy, you know. It's honestly very. So this car is three hundred thousand, lah. Brand new, right? In Malaysia, three. I'm not sure three hundred or three fifty, if I'm not wrong. Brand new. Or is it a bit lesser? Okay, let me just find the spec price sheet and put it in later. Like, I could be wrong. But the gauge cluster is nothing to shout about. Uh, you have this uh, color display screen here like, that tells you your boost and everything. This is the higher spec, so I'm told, right? This one has the JBL surround sound system, um, which is good. You know, you got Apple CarPlay and all, but I think the Japanese spec on some, their, their radios are so small. It's like the limb spec one. Uh. Um, everything else is your standard Toyota stuff, law, but you know, who cares? It's a performance car. You buy it with the intention of driving it hard, with the intention of performance, right? Uh, so I want to show you guys one more thing. You see here, uh, so you got this, this foot rest thing. Uh, actually, I can see my leg here. Okay, yeah, this one here. Yeah, actually, uh, the foot rest there. This thing is from Japan. Not cheap way. Eh, this one. Oh no, the cable. Focus a bit. Oh, that one over there. So this thing is from Japan. I'm not sure who makes it, lah, but it slots into your inner carpet one. It's a footrest. Quite cool. Lah. Let's look at it here again. Get a bit of room. Now it's, uh, now it's like 3 pm, lah, so we still got like your working traffic and all. But we got some clear roads, so maybe we'll give it a little bit. Okay, check it here. Uh, it's very usable power. It's not crazy fast, but it's the right amount of fast, I think. 260 horsepower. And the car feels light though. Even the steering, the response feels nice, you know, with the 265s. Pretty wide tyre, pretty wide tyre. Well, I quite like it. Uh. Quite fun with this car. Small, nimble. But I think what really ties up the whole experience is, is the shifter. Uh. I really cannot get over how good this thing is. I've been a huge fan of CAE shifters ever since I saw them. You know, I watch YouTube, I see people driving on the ring with this shifter. First of all, it looks so beautiful. I mean, don't you guys think so? Do you guys think it just looks so beautiful? It looks so expensive, you know. 
and it feels so good so like because there are some shifters that actually when they look like this right but when you actually drive it ah uh, it doesn't feel that good man it just looks good it doesn't feel that good you know maybe it's down to how you tweak it i guess you know like i've driven a, uh i've driven multiple cars with uh, k-tune shifters some of them are not bad some of them are a bit more harder to engage la. but i think maybe at the end of the day it's down to the cable but if only we can bring this car on like some mountain roads la. i think it'd be so nice la. like go go for morning drive in Uruya, Morgan thing you know or even Sepang i think that's when you can really really push the car and we take it on a little bit of a longer route now there's a lot of traffic here la. I feel like a racer now la, with this <laughs> Just going through the gears like a pro man So nice See, A bit bumpy but it's not harsh at all Really it's not harsh at all It's just a little bit bumpy you know and these seats, these Recaro RSGs, they hold you so well, like, you know, they feel so much better than the brands. So, all that, uh, so much torque from this three cylinder. So much torque. And sometimes when um, cars like this, right, such small engines, you know, when they tend to push so much power from the factory, right, it sort of loses a bit of that refinement, right? Because you push, you are pushing so much power from the stock engine. You know it tends to um, put a lot of strain. But I don't. Know, I feel this car feels okay. Yeah. Feels nice. So uh, uh, I know you guys are going to call me new. Call me. Oof. Grips and goes. Grips and goes. It's four wheel drive lah guys, so you know, It just grips and it just goes So nice Oh man, now I want a GIR is Wait for you, okay, so this car is running a set of four ports right But the brakes really need some heat anyway If not, it's like There's no feel It's like full on Caillou mode lah Cause you know, I think I think like it's running a set of uh, endless CCRG pads Which are the super high time racing pads So they really need some needs getting some heat into it before you can actually utilize the braking power la. yeah but i saw so far quite consistent the boost is like 1.1 bar 1.2 bar so i think with a tune and a full exhaust right oh, this car will be a beast la. because on sepang so i think they are doing pretty pretty fast laps already now and now we are not in the best weather condition like it's 35 degrees outside so you are i'm sure you get a little bit of heat so la. so Let's do a first gear pull. Let's do a first gear pull for 20. Okay, let's go. Okay. That was 100 already. It's okay. okay. Nice, oh. Not bad, lah, actually. Really not bad. It's not mind blowing fast lah. It's not like wow. just enough power to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I think just enough power to have a lot of fun. Seriously. That is the that's the right word. Lah. Enough power to have fun. 260 horse. Nice. And it sounds good lah, actually. It sounds good. It's a three cylinder, but it sounds good. Okay, lah. I think Toyota did a good job with this car. Uh, this car also got intercooler spray right now so you, there's a button you cannot see lah, but it says icy water spray so it's like those older Subarus like that so if the car gets a bit too hot just press then you spray water on the intercooler because those older Subarus they have it on actually they have a water tank in the trunk where you fill up right so there's a rod that goes to the intercooler you just press you just keep spraying water on the top mount intercooler right mm, nice now you guys see like, how short the gear is see first gear second gear okay Okay, we're going to do a few more pulls. Again, la, from second gear. La. Zero 
Hold this up. Okay, okay. Ah, nice. Oh, nice. That was faster legal speed limits, but oh, the car just keeps going. Uh. And the ratio was quite short. Eh. Just now it was like almost six gear already. Actually, no, actually, I already went to six, but I was short shifting the fifth a little bit. Uh, but Wow, what a fun car. Really enjoy driving this car. Lah. By the way, uh, guys, my review is just my own personal opinion. Lah. So, this may not uh, be how exactly the car is, but to me, you know, to me it's nice. I like it. Handles well, drives well, sounds good, looks good. I think, yeah, okay. I mean, but. The price point, like we talk a bit about the price point. I think now, just now we checked, um, they are going for about cheapest you can find, I guess, 220 grand, 230 grand. So that's almost 100,000 ringgit cheaper than what they were brand new. Lah. So in this price range, what can you get for the same amount of uh, equipment? Lah, let's say, uh, same amount of fun. Lah. We don't talk about power, we talk about similar characteristics lah right you can get i think the closest to me i can think of is the civic type r fk la of course fk8 not fl5 so that is front wheel drive 320 horsepower this is four wheel drive uh 260 horsepower and both are manual one's a honda one's a toyota i don't know what do you guys think i think looks wise i mean i'm a huge honda guy as you guys all already know but i think looks wise lah this car is, is more unique for sure lah. 10 out of 10 is more unique because how often do you see a car like looking like this like a modern day car that you know is a hatchback and it's like with a wide body and the two door is very rare nowadays even two door cars are so rare you got the golf r lah, but i think for the market they stopped doing the two door already um i can only relate this to maybe like a, you know if you talk about an old school car maybe like a like a Lancia Delta Integrale or something like because those are hatchbacks with white bodies rarely bred as well these also rarely bred so I don't know let me know what you guys think man like for me if I had the money I really don't know like it's going to be a super hard choice for me but I think with the four wheel drive uh, for someone that's not as experienced as me I think I can be quite a lot faster with this car than I can with the FK but price wise I don't know if the resale value is going to hold uh, on these uh, on these GR Yaris's, but they are how to say uh, they are not limited, but they are also I mean somehow or rather all these are JDM cars, you know. Eventually, when uh, I think the prices will go up because the US doesn't get this car. By the way, guys, the US only gets the GR Corolla. They don't get the GR Yaris. You know, us in Malaysia we get the GR Yaris. But overall, I think I really enjoyed driving this car. You know, it handles nice, sounds good. It's a, it's a good experience, lah. very different from the FK8 because from the FK8 I drove previously uh, had about 400 horsepower so as soon as you floor it, you can really feel the front moving around a bit This one obviously with it being stopped, it's very planted, it's very balanced So yeah, I mean, good experience Good experience, first time driving a Yaris, didn't expect it as well lah. I've only heard a lot of good things about this car uh, on the internet based on friends, you know. But yeah, overall, I think I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Lah. 8 out of 10 for me.